In this video, I'm going to create my own WooCommerce dropshipping store completely from scratch and you get to watch every step of the way. Now, not only am I gonna share with you tips, tactics, and strategies that I guarantee you will not be able to find anywhere else, but I'm also gonna provide you with a WooCommerce dropshipping cheat sheet with all of the links and everything that I'm going over in this video, all of the shortcuts, all built into the right structure so that you can start your WooCommerce dropshipping business the right way. All of this is coming up and a whole lot of more bonus value. So if you always wanted to have your own customizable online store, stay right where you are because by the end of this video, you'll go from beginner to pro. Quick intro and let's go. And welcome back, I'm Liran from AutoDS and as you know in this video you're going to learn how to create your own WooCommerce dropshipping store completely from scratch. One second before I get into it, if you haven't done so yet, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to always stay updated on the latest and hottest dropshipping topics that are coming out in the world of dropshipping along with dropshipping case studies, success stories, product finding strategies and methods, full beginner tutorials, suppliers, marketplaces, new features coming out and so much more that we have. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, enable those bell notifications and let's get this WooCommerce party started. So I am going to take it from the top, but I will make it quick because we have so much content to cover so that you will really be able to learn how to do it from A to Z. So for those of you who are not familiar with the dropshipping business model, it's simply a model that allows you to host your own online store and sell products without actually holding them in stock. So what you do is you have an online store, you add products to your store, your customer buys those products and you will purchase the product from the supplier's website and ship it directly to your end customer, meaning you have no physical contact with these products, you don't have to purchase inventory upfront, all of this makes it a low risk and high reward business model. So that is the dropshipping business model and of course we can mix that together with WooCommerce which simply allows us to host an online store which at the end of the day WooCommerce is just a plugin for WordPress. To make it clear, first we have WordPress which allows us to create an online website. Then we have WooCommerce which is a plugin to WordPress which allows us to create an e-commerce website, list products for sale, get payments for our customers, and of course, grow our online business. Okay, so at the end of the day, WooCommerce is a plugin to WordPress, and that's what we're going over in this video, how to actually create a dropshipping website on WordPress, which is using the WooCommerce plugin to make our e-commerce business practical, safe, and easy. Now let's go over some of the advantages of dropshipping on WooCommerce before we jump into the bits and bytes. So first of all, having a website on WooCommerce means we'll have our own domain name. So we're going to have our own www.rstorename.com, meaning everything here is going to be completely customizable. We can do whatever we want with our website. It's not some online marketplace like eBay or Facebook marketplace where we have to follow their rules and policies and we don't really have an actual storefront. Here you actually have a storefront and everything that you do with your website is up to you and it's completely customizable. The second advantage is the scalability and that's because unlike marketplaces that I just mentioned you don't have any limits and you don't have anyone telling you what you can and what you cannot sell. Now of course we are going to avoid selling products that we cannot sell like copyrighted material, trademarks, hazardous, flammable material and so forth but no one is telling us how much we can list, which categories we can sell from and so forth. So it's completely customizable, it's very scalable, and we also have a bunch of plugins and themes that we can use to make our stores look better, to increase our sales conversions, and I'm gonna go through some of these plugins with you in this video. And it also allows us to have pages like content pages, meaning we can have our own blog pages and bring free organic traffic to our website, but we're gonna jump into all of that later on. But it's important to understand all of the power that we're going to get when we'll have our own store on WooCommerce. Now, some of the disadvantages of creating a WooCommerce store is, well, there's a high learning curve and that's exactly why I'm hosting this video for you. I'm going to create a store from scratch and you're gonna watch everything. And not only that, but as I promised, I'm also going to send you this WooCommerce dropshipping cheat sheet. And if you want access to this cheat sheet, all you have to do is follow our Instagram channel. The link is in the description below. Then come back to this video, leave a comment below, hashtag WooCommerce. Let me know what you thought about this video and I will happily send you this cheat sheet, which will walk you through everything that you need to do to create a successful WooCommerce store, including all of the links, all of the tools and everything else that you need to start your business the right way. And that will take out the hard or the tough learning curve that we have when starting a WooCommerce business. And on the other hand, there's no organic traffic, meaning as soon as we create our stores and 
it's completely ready and we're ready to start selling. Nobody actually knows that our store exists because it's not on some big marketplace like eBay where you can list your product and then people are simply gonna search for that product and see your listing. It's not the same here and we're actually responsible for bringing traffic to our website, whether using paid marketing tactics or free marketing tactics, both of which I will teach you in this video. So that's a little bit of what WooCommerce is and the pros and cons. Now let's jump right into it and create a WooCommerce dropshipping store from zero. So how do we start a dropshipping business with WooCommerce? What's the first thing that we need to do? So first of all, we wanna find products to sell. This is the product research phase and I'm not gonna dive too deep into it into this video because it's not about product research, but I will give you all of the tools so that you will be able to research the right products the right way. So the first thing that we're going to do is learn about product research. Now, this is the blog article that's got lots of explanations on everything that I'm going over in this video and you have the link to this blog article right below this video, but if you want the summarized version, the cheat sheet, well, I told you what you have to do in order to get access to it, so do it. And as you can see right here, the first step is to find winning products. So first we've got the AutoDS product research tool. This is built into the AutoDS system. So you're gonna use this to find trending products. If you're already an AutoDS member, you can use it right now. Just log in, hit the marketplace link on the left menu, and you will have a huge database of trending products that you can resell. That is tactic number one. Number two is the AutoDS Best Sellers YouTube Playlist. So even if you're not an AutoDS member, just click on the link in the cheat sheet and you will get to our Sell These Now YouTube Playlist, which as you can see right here, is filled with the hottest products to sell. Each and every one of these videos have golden nuggets. And with the products that we're recommending, if you add 20, 30 variations of each product idea, I guarantee that you will test the market correctly and you will start making sales. It may not come on the first day, may not come on the first week, and for some it may not even come in the first month. But the more practice the more work you put into it, the better your store will look, the better you'll be able to market the right products to the right audiences, and of course, start making those sales. So click on the link to go to our YouTube playlist. Then you've also got our product finding blog. So click on that link, you'll go to our blog section, and here you have the best product finding blog articles. So if you're the type that likes to read, you can read all of these articles and get the best product ideas. If you're the type that likes to watch, watch the best sellers YouTube playlist. And those are the top three product research methods that I recommend to you that don't cost any money and will get you some of the best product ideas that you can sell on your dropshipping stores. Number four is spying on the competition. So we have a blog article here that can help you with that, but at the end of the day, you need to know how to find your competitors, see their stores, know what they're able to sell, see what ads they're running, and simply learn from their best practices. And the best way to do that is to simply learn how to spy on your competition. And in this way, you're also gonna find some trending product ideas. Okay, so more info on that in the link. Next, you can check suppliers bestseller sections. So I can just go to Walmart, or I can go to the AliExpress dropshipping center, and I can find best selling products from there. We also have content on that. So just go to our YouTube channel, go to our blog page, search for the AliExpress dropshipping center, and you'll find content on that too, as well as going to other dropshipping suppliers websites like CJ Dropshipping or Walmart and just seeing what's trending and what's hot over there. That will also give you some pretty good product ideas. Next, keep track of social media trends. So you can go right now to TikTok, search for hashtag TikTok made me buy it, and there you'll find a whole bunch of other dropshippers selling products using that hashtag, and there you'll also learn about new hashtags that they're using. And in this way, you're gonna find lots of people who are dropshipping products on TikTok, and those products are going really, really viral, so you can get a good idea of what audiences are looking for there. And last but not least, you can analyze dropshipping ads using Chrome extensions like My Ad Finder, or simply going to Facebook and searching for Get Yours Now Free Shipping, and text like that that people usually add in their Facebook ads ads and then this way you're gonna find lots of Facebook ads that you can learn from, especially, and of course, the dropshipping product ads. So utilize those methods and all of the products that you're finding, I want you to add them to this product research dropshipping spreadsheet with the link, of course, in the cheat sheet. And here you're gonna add all of the products to this spreadsheet. And once you add them, you're gonna answer these questions here on the right side. And once you answer all these questions and you have a product where you answered yes to all of the questions, that means that this product has a high chance to sell on your stores and that'll help you narrow down all of these products that you're finding during the product research phase and really narrow them down 
to find the best winners for your store. So utilize these methods, add your product findings into the product research spreadsheet, and that will make your product research phase, which is important, and it needs to keep going on and on forever and ever, but it will make it much, much easier for you. Now, after we're done finding products, we need to choose a dropshipping supplier to source these products from and add it to our stores. So in other words, I already have a list of products now from the product research spreadsheet that I wanna to add to my stores. Now I need to look for suppliers who actually have these products or similar products to them that I can add. So what you're gonna do here is click on the select a dropshipping supplier and here you'll see a list of over 25 dropshipping suppliers that we support here at AutoDS, which means you can completely automate your dropshipping business using these suppliers right here. You can also filter them by regions. So for example, if you wanna dropship to the United Kingdom, then you can click on United Kingdom to see suppliers who have warehouses in the UK and then you can ship really quickly from the UK to the UK and that way your customers are gonna get their products much much faster and they're gonna be really happy about that and most likely return to purchase from your store again and or refer their friends and their family to purchase from your store too. So here you have a suppliers list where you can automate your business with them and we're gonna talk about automation soon but these are some of the best suppliers that you can work with today. Now after you found your products and you know what suppliers have these products so that you can import them from these suppliers to your selling channel and your selling channel in this case is WooCommerce. So once we have all of that, it's time to create our WooCommerce store. Now, before we start to create our WooCommerce store, there's a few factors to take into consideration. The first is that we need a hosting service. Now a hosting service simply gives you hosting space and tells you, okay, you can create your website using our hosting service. So we're gonna give you uh, 10 megabytes or 100 gigabytes or one terabyte of data that you can add to your website and we'll host all of that for you. So the first thing is to have a hosting plan. The second thing is to have your own domain name. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a domain, www.yourstorename.com. You're going to connect your domain to the hosting service and then that way they both speak to each other. So the domain will be a part of the hosting service and this can be done in several ways. So we've got the domain, we've got the hosting service, and now we need to install WordPress and WooCommerce to the hosting service where we also connected the domain. So it's a few different things that we need to connect together. Now, if you have a budget aside and you don't mind paying extra, you can do all that directly from WordPress. So go to wordpress.com, check out their plans and pricing because it will not be free. You're gonna need to have the WooCommerce business plan and that is going to set you back about $25 a month. And on top of that, you also have to connect your domain name, which will cost an average of about $20 a year. Now there's an advantage and a disadvantage to this method. The advantage is that it's going to connect everything together. So you're gonna have your hosting service, your domain name, and WordPress with the WooCommerce plugin all in the same platform. That's gonna cost you a little bit extra, and I just showed you the pricing for that. Now, if you wanna find out the cheaper way to do it, then you're gonna have to look for a dedicated hosting service and you're going to purchase a domain name from a different spot and your hosting service is gonna have the WordPress and WooCommerce plugin installed for you automatically. So hosting service and domain name coming from two different places and we're going to connect it together. This is the cheaper way to do it and also my preferred and recommended way to do it because you have more control over these things when each one is being handled separately rather than having it all under the same platform. So when you wanna leave the platform or cancel your account, you won't have to cancel your domain name and the hosting service, you can just cancel one and of course continue with the other. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I'm gonna show you the cheaper method, which is my recommended method. All right, so let's begin. First, there's the hosting service. So here we have the top three recommended hosting services that I recommend, which is Bluehost, SiteGround, and Hostinger. All three of these hosting providers also have the WordPress with WooCommerce plugins that they can install for your website. So of course you don't have to purchase that separately. And on top of that, they have real cheap services, fast server connections, so it all works out. Now you can choose any one of these three. They all have similar features and almost similar price plans. In my case, I went with SiteGround because they turned out to be the best from my research. So I already signed up for a SiteGround account you have the links to it in the cheat sheet or in the blog article. But as you can see, my account is already created. So check out these three hosting services, see which one best suits your needs, best suits your budget, and sign up for your first month or for your first year. Now I'm gonna click here on websites. 
And here you can see that I already added a website called productchasers.com, which of course I purchased from GoDaddy. So GoDaddy is your go-to for purchasing your domain name. Okay, so we've got the hosting service, which could be Bluehost SiteGround or Hostinger. Then we've got GoDaddy for the domain. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to GoDaddy and you're gonna search for a good domain name. Now, if you don't know what domain name you're gonna use, it's okay. You do not have to do it at this stage yet. Later down the road, when you created your store and you thought of a good name or thought of a good category, which helps you think of a good name for your store, you can also do that later. So you can sign up for the hosting service now, leave to GoDaddy on the site until you know what domain you wanna use. And for now, SiteGround or whatever hosting service you're using will offer you a temporary domain name until you connect with your own domain. In any case, what I did was I went to GoDaddy and I purchased a domain name called productchasers.com. Now what I need to do is tell GoDaddy that my host is SiteGround, so that productchasers.com that I bought from you, I want you to connect it to this hosting service so that I could actually start working on my website under this domain name. But before that, you need to add your website. So if you just signed up to a hosting service, you're gonna click on new website. They all have it in different menus. In my case, my hosting plan only allows me to have one website and I already have that. So I'm gonna have to upgrade my plan. But here it's gonna ask you, what is your domain name? You're gonna tell the hosting service what the domain is that you purchased from GoDaddy. And then once you add it, we're gonna click on site tools right here. Now what I need to do is tell GoDaddy that I have a hosting service and I want them to connect the domain domain with the hosting service. So here you can see that we have a name server. So look for the name server on the host website. And here you can see it's ns1.siteground.net and ns2.siteground.net. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to GoDaddy and I'm going to click on the domain that I purchased. Then I want to go over to the DNS settings. So I'm going to click on DNS. And here we can see the domains that I have at GoDaddy. So I've got that domain, the productchasers.com. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on DNS right here because I want to set the DNS settings to let it know that I want to give SiteGround access to edit this domain name. Okay, so here I'm going to click on change under the name servers. And then I'm going to choose connect my domain to a website I've built because you're not going to use GoDaddy's default name servers. Then we're going to skip on these two options and we're going to click on enter my own name servers advanced. And here we're going to paste the name servers that we have in the DNS settings under the IPN name servers from our hosting service. So it's ns1 and ns2.siteground.net, which as you can see, is already entered inside my GoDaddy account. So this of course gives me access to connect SiteGround with GoDaddy. So hosting service and domains are now connected. So now I have my hosting service, I have my domain, it's time to create my website. So what I'm gonna do first is install and manage WordPress. I'm doing this of course through my hosting service. And here I have the option to install only WordPress or WordPress with WooCommerce. And I realized that I haven't showed you the pricing settings yet. So let's do that now. So as you can see right here, the startup stores cost $20 a month, but if you're gonna go with an annual plan, then it's $15 a month, which is already cheaper than what we saw if we're creating a website through WordPress. And not only is it cheaper, but of course, we're also getting the WooCommerce and WordPress plugins. We're getting a better hosting service than what WordPress would have offered us. And if you do your homework, you're gonna realize this too. And it's gonna pay off better to use, of course, a hosting service. Now, in any case, let's get back to it. So now we need to install WordPress and WooCommerce on our hosting page so that we can actually start working on our website because right now we have hosting, but we have pretty much nothing else. So what I'm gonna do now is click WordPress and WooCommerce. Okay, the domain that we're gonna add it to is productchasers.com. The language is English, installation path, no need to touch. Then just add your admin info. So I'm just gonna choose a username, generate a password, enter my email address. And here I have the option to install an add-on called the WordPress starter. Okay, you can do it, you can include it or you can not include it. Either way, you're gonna have an onboarding process to create your website through WooCommerce, but in this case, I will install it. Even if you don't have this option, again, it's completely fine. You will have an onboarding process through WooCommerce, which is practically the same. So now I'm just gonna wait a few seconds while it's installing WordPress and WooCommerce on my productchasers.com website. If I go to productchasers.com right now, you'll see that there's an awesome site in the making. An amazing site is coming to this web address, come back soon. Of course, I didn't, have to do anything to do this. And we can see that WordPress is now installed on productchasers.com. So now we're ready to get started. So we can see right here, manage installations. We've got productchasers.com. The installation is WordPress and WooCommerce. And I can just log into the admin panel through this button right here. So I'm gonna click on that. And another way to get to it is to simply go to productchasers.com slash WP admin. Okay, 
Welcome to your WooCommerce site. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is that WordPress starter that I was talking about. I'm going to click on start now. And the first thing that it's allowing me to do is to choose a store theme. Now, again, even if you're not using WordPress starter, WordPress has an onboarding process with you and you can choose your store theme from there. But this just makes it a little bit more friendly. OK, so here we already have the storefront, which is a free theme which in this case, I'm going to keep it on storefront. But just so you can see, check out all of these other templates that we can use for our WooCommerce website. And all of these are free. As you can see right here, these are all free themes and we do not have to pay a dime to use any one of them. Now, of course, there are also paid themes, but the free themes are more than enough for you to get started, make your sales. And then if you want, you can use some of your profits to get even a premium theme. But these themes are more than enough to get started the right way and make those sales. In this case, I'm going to keep it with storefront. OK, so I'm going to click on that. And here we have a demo. So it shows you an example of what your store will look like. So I'm just going to keep it like this. We've got the website right here. We've got a banner right here saying welcome shop by category with all of these uh, category images and all of these sections which we can later on play around with. OK, so I'm going to choose this storefront or I can choose any other from this menu. As you can see right here, you can create lots of different looking websites. OK, all of these are free. And once again, I'm just going to go with the basic one just to keep things super, super simple. OK, so I'm going to choose this theme and we're going to click on continue. Next, the onboarding process is asking me if I want to add any of these to my website. So do I want to have a contact form? Do I want to add maps, a gallery, multilingual site? For now, I'm just going to select a contact form because it's always good to have it. It's a free plugin by WP Forms and I'm just going to click on continue. So up until now, everything is pretty friendly. I'm sure that you can agree with me here. It's a very, very technical process if we're not doing it with this user interface. But of course, we are using it because we want things to be friendlier. And as you can see right now, we're getting more to the analytics and the marketing section. So we can add Google Analytics, optimize for SEO, which I do recommend to use, growing your subscriber list, managing your contacts and so forth. For now, I'm not going to select them because we're not going to have time to get into this. This is more advanced tactics. But just so you know, all of this is right here. So you can add Google Analytics to your website. And of course, check out who's coming to your website, where they're coming from, what your audience demographics and behavior is and so forth. Optimize your website for SEO. It's very, very important to get organic traffic to your website. And we'll talk about that when we get to the blog section, growing your subscribers list. So this is going to collect your customers customers email addresses so that you can later on send them email marketing campaigns, managing your contacts through HubSpot and so forth. Right now, I'm just going to click on complete. And now it's installing everything that I mentioned, everything that I chose. And it's just going to take a couple of seconds. And now our website is ready. So it was that simple. Now we can start customizing our website. So I'm going to click on go to dashboard because there's no reason to view the site. We know what it looks like. It has that storefront theme. So now I'm on the WordPress dashboard. You've been very patient so far. I know I take things step by step, but I'm doing it so that you will have all of the right knowledge no matter what level you are on. OK, so let's get started. This is the WordPress dashboard with WooCommerce inside. And as you can see, we can view our website. We can manage our pages. We can change the website's design. We can check our orders, create and edit products, create and edit forms. And there's so much more to do. So we have all the options here on the left side and also here on top. As you can see, we've got some plugins that were already installed like WP Forms and Purge SG Cache. So those are pre-installed plugins. Let's go over the menu on the left side. So we have the dashboard, which is what we're looking at now. We have posts, which is the blog articles that we'll be writing so that we can offer value to our audiences and get them to click and go to our websites. We have the media. So every picture and every video that we upload is going to go to the media section. Then we can use that media and post it on our website. Then we've got pages. So this is different from blog articles. This is actually the pages that we're going to have, like our blog page, which has all of our blog articles, the about us pages, the legal pages and all of that. Then we have the WooCommerce plugin. So I can just click on that and I can get started started with the onboarding process that we're getting from WooCommerce. OK, so we're going to go over this, but I'm going to continue with the rest of the menu. Next, we've got products. So this is where we're actually going to add products to our store. But I'm going to, of course, show you the automated way to do it so that you can save your time and scale your business. Then we've got analytics. We don't have a reason to go there now because the store is brand new. Uh, marketing, you can do marketing through here, though. I don't recommend it as much. We're going to talk about marketing also soon. Uh, WP Forms. So this is where we can actually create forms. It's one of the plugins. It's the same plugin that we're seeing up here. So this is a good way to add forms to our website and get customer feedback or get any other information that we want from them. Appearance. So here is where we can actually edit our themes, customize our themes, even though we already did that with that WordPress uh, starter. But this is where you're going to do it if you're not using that. Uh, widgets to use on your website, menus, uh, the header part, the background, and of course, your storefront. So you can edit 
how your store looks and, and all the rest of the appearance settings there. And then you've got plugins. We're gonna go over plugins. So plugins, like as I mentioned, are add-ons that you can add to your website and they can help you with so many things like upselling, cross-selling, uh, get customers email addresses, make your pages load faster, help you with the SEO and so much more. Then you've got users. So if you wanna add uh, more users to your domain so that they can work on your website too. And we've got tools, uh, general settings, which we will also talk about in this video and more things that have been included from the hosting service. Uh, SG stands for SiteGround. Okay, so that's a basic overview of the menu, but now we want to actually create our website. So let's take it from step number one. Remember how I told you that the first thing that you need to do is product research and look for a product to sell. So let's say we did that part. And the second step is to look for a reliable dropshipping supplier. So in this case, we already did the first two and I'm just gonna choose an example so that I can actually start and create my website. So let's choose a good product and create our website around that product. So I'm gonna click on the AutoDS product finding blog link in the WooCommerce cheat sheet. Again, guys, if you want access to all of this, all you have to do is follow our Instagram page. The link is in the bio and add a comment below this video, hashtag WooCommerce. Let me know what you thought about this video and I will happily send you this cheat sheet with everything that you need. So all the information is summarized here. And if you wanna go more in depth and get more explanations on every one of these shortcuts, then of course you can click on the blog article. It's in the title and you can read more in depth in the blog. Okay, so I clicked on the product finding and bestsellers blog article link. And here I have a whole bunch of articles with a whole bunch of trending products inside. So I'm just going to enter one of them and let's choose one product from here. So we're going to scroll down. There's a fast charging USB cable. There's a neck supporting pillow. And how about this laser hair epilator right here? It looks pretty good. It's a very trendy product. It's being sold for $33, being sold for $10. So there's at least one seller making at least $23 in profit every time he sells it. And we can also see the info right here. We have a link to his ad. So you can see right here that his Facebook ad has about almost 2000 comments, almost 2000 shares and 12,000 engagements. So this is a pretty popular product. I wanna create my website with a similar product and do a better job than what the seller is doing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna head back to the blog article and I'm gonna click on the supplier slash source because now I can see where he's actually getting the product from and you can see it right here on Aliexpress for just a dollar and 28 cents. But I do want to look for others that are similar to this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a laser hair epilator and we're just going to choose the one that really looks good from the best seller. Okay, so we have all of these. Let's go for one that has lots of good reviews and that isn't too expensive. So I'm gonna go for this one right here. It's got lots of sales, it's got good reviews. It's also got a video that I can use, as you can see right here, shows the product in action. Okay, so very nice. And we've got a good product description and even another video over here. Okay, so very nice. We can run ads on this product, we can showcase it, and we have the whole product description right here, which doesn't look that good, but I'll show you guys how you can optimize it and the rest of these images down here. Okay, so it's looking good. I'm going to go with this product and create a store around this product. Okay, so let's go back and start creating our website with the product that we know that we're gonna use. Okay, so I'm gonna click here on WooCommerce and I'm gonna start the onboarding process from here. Okay, so the first is to enter your store's details. Okay, so I'm gonna do that really quick. In which industry does the store operate? I'm gonna go with other, and we're selling physical products. Okay, so after I gave some just very general store information, it's asking me now to choose a theme. Since we already did this, I'm gonna go with continue with my active theme. And by the way, the website right now looks like this. So as you can see, it, it's not what it was before where it says, uh, where it said like, check out this awesome website coming soon or something like that. Right now we actually have the theme that was installed on productchasers.com, which in this case is that storefront theme, which is free. Now, when you're logged into the admin panel, you'll always see this top banner right here where you can edit any page that you're on or create new posts, new pages and so forth. But of course your audience will not see this top banner up here. Okay, so I'm gonna go with continue with my active theme and now it wants store details. Details. So I'm going to give it the details that it's looking for. So first we have the general tab right here. Okay. So the store's address, the city, the state, the postcode, zip code. I'm going to skip all that for now, but this is the important stuff. So general options, selling location. So here you can choose if you want to sell to all countries, sell to all countries, except for certain countries or sell to specific countries. Okay. So we can hover over right here and you can see this option lets you limit which countries you are willing to sell to. Okay, the next one is shipping location. So what countries do you want to have the shipping option? Okay, if they don't have the shipping option, even if you selected them in sell to all countries, they're still not gonna be able to check out and choose a shipping option. 
Okay, so choose which countries you want to ship to. For example, ship to all countries, ship to specific countries, or disable shipping and shipping calculations. So here, for example, I can go to ship to all countries, sell to all countries so that everybody can see my website and everybody can check out and you have the default customer location. Okay, so here, for example, you can go with uh, geolocate and it'll just use the customer's real location. Then you have enable taxes. So here you can enable tax rates and calculations. So for example, if you're selling to the US and you know that you're selling to a state that collects state tax, then you will have to charge tax and of course pay that to the US government once a year. And by the way, if you want to know how taxes work, we have a video on dropshipping taxes, how it works, and of course a blog article about it. So if you want to know more about that, if you want to see that, let me know in the comments below and I will send it to you. Next, we can enable coupons. So there's no reason not to allow that. And in the currency, you're going to choose the right currency. In this case, let's say I want to target the US audience. So I want to charge them using a US dollar currency. Now, the thing here is that you can also use a plugin that will show each customer the currency that's related to them. So for example, if you have a customer in the United Kingdom, then they're gonna see the UK's currency. And if you have one in the US and they're gonna see the US currency so that this way they will not all see the USD currency if it's not right for them. Okay, so that's the general tab. So I'm just gonna click on save changes. Okay, next we've got products. For starters, I wouldn't touch this tab yet because the default is pretty right unless you want to change of course the weight unit to pounds the dimensions maybe to yards instead of meters or instead of centimeters uh, enable product reviews you should have it on enable star rating on review so everything here you can keep it as is no reason to touch that right from the start if you want to customize that later on according to your needs go ahead and do so next we've got shipping Okay, so this is the part where you're actually enabling shipping zones and you can charge a different shipping price from different countries. And so this way you can sell worldwide and charge the right shipping prices for different locations. For example, let's click on add shipping zone. And let's say I want to add a shipping zone to the United States and offer them free shipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this US free shipping. That's the zone name. The zone region is the United States. And the shipping method here, I'm going to add a shipping method and I'm going to call it free shipping. And I'm going to add this shipping method. Okay, so now the United States have a free shipping option. Now, if I want to give them maybe expedited shipping and charge them for that, then I'm going to also offer uh, a flat rate. And here I'm going to edit that to, let's say, $15. And it's going to be called flat rate expedited shipping. OK, and that's going to cost them $15. And then, and then this way, we're going to use a better shipping service. And you can do this for different countries. You can add more countries, more shipping zones, more flat rates or more free shipping and do with it as you wish. So that's a little bit about the shipping zones. It's important to set that up correctly, especially when you're planning on shipping worldwide. Then we've got payments. So this is how customers are going to pay you and how WooCommerce is going to send you that money. So my first recommendation recommendation here is to enable PayPal payments. Okay, that's usually the default go to payment option. But for customers who don't have PayPal or don't want to use PayPal's guest option checkout, you want to add other payment providers. So click on discover other payment providers, and it'll take you to the extension store on WooCommerce where you can add other payment providers like WooCommerce payments, Stripe, if you live in the US or other places that support it, Square for WooCommerce, PayPal, we already talked about it, and you have more and more options. So choose whichever is right for you, which Whatever payment option is suitable for the location that you reside in. And of course, that will give you more sales because you will offer customers the option to swipe their credit card without having to create a guest account on PayPal or anything else. Next, we've got accounts and privacy. Um, not much to touch here. So we've got guest checkout, allow customers to place orders without an account. There's no reason to force a customer to create an account when they check out. And everything else here can pretty much stay as is. You can edit your registration privacy policy and checkout privacy policy here, but you're also going to create your, your privacy policy pages, which I will show you. So there's that. Then there's the emails. So here you can customize the emails that you're sending to your buyers. So for example, we've got the first three types of emails that will be sent to me to lirana at ods.com. So those types of emails are whenever I get a new order, whenever a customer cancels an order, and whenever an order fails to process. So for that, I'm going to get emails. And the rest for the customer, they're going to receive emails every time an order is on hold, when an order is being processed, Process, when an order is being completed, when they get a refund for their order and so forth. And of course, you can change each and every one of these messages. So I can click on, for example, when an order is on hold. And here you can see all of your options to send in this email. So the subject line is, 
your site title order has been received. And if you want to know what other placeholders you can use, so site title, of course, is going to show a productchasers.com. So it's going to say your productchasers.com order has been received. Thank you for your order in the heading and in the additional content in the text body message, it's going to say we look forward to fulfilling your order soon. Okay, so of course, you can change everything. You can use placeholders here. You can use site title, site address, site URL, order date, order number, and so forth. So here you can change the automatic emails that, that you're getting and also your customers. And we don't need to touch integration in advanced right now. So let's go back to creating our store after we have all of the right options and the shipping zones and the rest of the settings set up. Okay, let's finally start organizing our website and making it the, this one product store using this product. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use an extension called Ollie Save to save all of the images and videos that I have on this product. Now, of course, when I import using AutoDS, it's going to import all of this anyway, but I'm going to use those images right now to create a good profile photo or a cover image or see what other creative ideas I can do with it. So I'm going to use once again, the Ali Save extension. Then I'm going to click on the button right here to download all of the variations. Okay, so we're going to create a folder for this. We're going to call it laser epilator. Okay, and save those images there. So that's the variation images, but I also want everything that we have down here. Okay, so I'm going to download everything from here. Okay, and everything was downloaded. I could see it all in this directory. However, the videos were not downloaded, just JPEG files as we can see here. So we can choose a good image from here, but we will need to download the video separately, which I'll show you how to do that when we get to it. Then there's also the product information, which we will also get to. So for now, let's head back to WooCommerce. And now we're going to customize the way that our website looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to appearance and we're going to click on themes. Here you can see all the themes that we have and I'm going to click on customize. So it's the same thing as just clicking on customize over here, but I just wanted you to see the whole menu. Now we're customizing this WordPress theme. Now this is using what we call a block editor and I'm going to skip the tour since I know how to work with it. So it's free to use, but it's not as user friendly as other plugins like Elementor which will make your life a whole lot easier. Elementor is a drag and drop builder for your WordPress website or for your WooCommerce website. And as you can see right here in this video, it just makes everything really easy. You see something that you want from the left menu, you drag it, you drop it where you want it, and you continue editing the page with a great user interface. I do have premium access to Elementor on my website, but I'm not going to use it since I'm not sure if you guys are going to use Elementor because it does cost, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 50, $60 annually. And if you don't want to put that budget aside, then I'm not going to show you how to do it on a platform that you're not using. However, I would love to use Elementor for this example, but if you're not going to use it, let's go with the harder way and use the free block editor that is included here. But as you can see, I cannot take something and drag it here. I just need to edit everything on the left or right side and it will come into effect on the page. Okay, so let's go over our options and see what we have. So first, we're all familiar with the way that our website looks right now, which is like this. Let's edit this page. So first things first, we have the site identity. So we're going to give it a title and here we're going to create a good title for this product. So first it is a laser epilator. So let's just call it that for now and no need for a tagline. Okay. So just a very basic name on what the item is. Next, you can select a site icon. Now this is a good thing to have because of course you'll have an icon and it'll talk to your brand. So I'm going to show you how to do that now along with selecting a logo. So there's a few ways to create a logo for your store and there's free options, there's paid options. And also in the WooCommerce cheat sheet, I added a good article on how to create a professional store logo, all kinds of different ways that you can create your own logo. You know, today you don't have to pay anyone to do this for you. Uh, you can do it absolutely for free using all of the methods that we showed you here. So if you want the link to this, you have it in the WooCommerce cheat sheet. Again, if you want access to this cheat sheet right here with all of the shortcuts that I'm talking about in this video, all you have to do is follow our Instagram page. The link is in the video description below. Then comment in this video, hashtag WooCommerce. Let me know what you think about this video. And of course, I will send you this exact cheat sheet. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to go to Canva. You can use, of course, any method that you see fit inside our logo article. And as as we can see right here, site icons need to be 512 by 512 and logos also have their own dimensions, but Canva already knows. So I'm just going to click on create design. Then I'm going to search for logo and here we have it 500 by 500. So I'm going to use this also for the logo and also for the site icon. So here we have a whole bunch of templates that we can use and we're going to edit these templates. And of course we can choose for whatever we want. So let's say right here, we're selling uh, something in the health category. So um, let's see if I doubt it, but let's see if laser is going to bring us any nice here, laser hair removal. Let's see. No, no templates there. Let's just try laser pure vision. So this is laser 
uh, for vision, but let's click on skincare. Okay, skincare products. This can work pretty well. So let's create a logo. Let's say, just create a really quick one. Okay, I'm going to go with this one right here. So I'm just going to click on it. Okay, I'm going to keep it very, very simple. Let me make this one a little bit bigger. And I'm going to change this to laser hair epilator, uh, natural skincare. We can maybe change that to any model that we can choose, like uh, remove hair. Actually, no, we're going to remove it because it's small text anyway. No, nobody's going to see it. Okay, so I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. This also, I'm not putting that much work into it, but there are so many things that you can do using Canva. For example, I can search for a few different things and it doesn't only have to be here. We can also search in elements for a good graphic. For example, let's search here for the word laser. We're actually seeing laser lights, which isn't that good. Let's try searching for laser device. And here we go. We already have some good ones that we can use right here. Um, I could go with this one. It's a little bit plain. I can also go with this one. Let's go with this one. It looks better. So I'm just going to choose this. I'm going to remove this one and I'm just going to add this image right here. Maybe change the font here and maybe add some nice lines and things like that. So lines and shapes. Maybe put a nice line over here. And in styles, we can actually create some brand styles and understand what colors we want to use. So here you have a whole bunch of color palettes that are already custom made for you. So you can choose any nice style that you like and continue making sure that the rest of your website has these brand colors. So I'm just going to go with this one right here. Laser hair epilator. Uh, very quick and to the point. Didn't go too much into it because I want to show you guys, of course, more important things. But this is one of the best ways to create a free logo for your website. So now I'm just going to download it. And now that it's downloaded, I'm going to go back to the customizer. And next to the site title, laser hair epilator, we're going to also add that logo. So I'm going to click on select logo right here. And now I need to upload the logo to the media section of my WooCommerce store. So I'm going to go to my downloads directory and select that logo that we just downloaded using Canva. Okay, so here it is right here. We're going to select it. It wants to crop the image. This is good. Okay, and here we have the store logo right here. All right, so let's continue. We also have a site icon. So I'm just going to use the same logo, select that from the media library and Let's go. Okay, so now we also have a favicon. So when we enter productchasers.com, let's just click on publish so that we can see these changes. So now if I head over to productchasers.com, let's see if we have the logos. Okay, so here we have this one, the laser hair epilator that we created really quickly using Canva. And we also have, I don't know if you guys can see it, but we can also see that logo right up here on Chrome. Okay, so on top of the Chrome browser or whatever browser they're using, they're also going to see your logo. Again, guys, not the best logo. And there are many ways to create logos. I'm just doing it really quickly so that we can move on and have all the important things in this store. Okay, so that's the site identity. Now let's work on the header. So the header is the top part of our website, which we're seeing right here. Okay, so I'm going to click on header. And the first thing that we can do is add an image. Now we're going to see this image right here on the header part of our website. We can try something, see how it comes out. And if it doesn't look good, we can go without an image there. Next, we have the background color. So here I would want to make the background color the same as the logo so that we won't have this square over here. It just doesn't look that good. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to Canva to see what the color code is for this color. Okay, so I've got the logo right here. I'm just going to click on the background. And here I can see the color. So I'm just going to click on that and see what the color is. So here I can hover over it and I can see that it's a light gray number E8, E8, E8. Okay, so let's use that. So here I'm going to go to select a background color and I'm going to go with E8, E8, E8. Now the background should be the same color and there we go. So the background is not the same color as the logo. So now we don't have that square over there and it just looks much, much better. Okay, next let's go with an image. So I'm going to try an image and let's see how this comes out. So we already have all the images that we downloaded using AliExpress. I think a good image for the header would probably be this one right here. Okay, except for this five colors of volleyball instead of available, but that's what we have when using uh, Chinese sellers. But I'm going to also show you soon cool tricks and tactics how to, um, you know, overcome these issues. But this image looks pretty good besides that. So let's go with that and see if we can crop it from here. What I like about the image is that it simply shows all the variations and it shows the product side by side, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to click on add new image, then we're going to select file, I'm going to hover over to that directory and look for that image, which is this one right here, click on open. Okay, so now I'm going to click on select and crop. And here I'm going to crop out that section that I didn't really want. Okay, so I'm just going to click now on crop image. And here we go much, much better. And as you can see, it's taking up all of the space. And I don't think it looks that good. It looks it doesn't look professional. Um, we can of course, play around with the stretching and 
and make it smaller, but then the background color is not the same as the, as the one in our logo, so I'm just not going to use this. But that is how you change your header image. I had a feeling it's not going to look that good, but it was worth a try. So I'm just going to click on the X button up here, and it's going to remove that, and we're going to go back to the cleaner header menu. And that's pretty much it. You can also change your text color, your link colors, but right now I don't have any brand guidelines for this website, so I'm going to keep it as is, and I'm going to click on publish. Okay, so that's the header part of the website. Now, I didn't touch the menus yet. That's in another session. Okay, next we have the footer. So the footer is the bottom part of your website, which should be practically the same as the top part. So it looks like it's not using the same uh, gray color. So we're going to go with background color. Okay, so E8, 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 and we'll have the same background color right here. Okay, so that looks good. And the rest, I'm not going to touch the rest of the colors right now. Okay, so we did a little bit about the colors and uh, added this uh, brand background color. Then we've got the main background. Okay, so here we're actually looking at the background that we can see. If I just change the color, you can see that it's changing everything that we see over here. Okay, so here you can go for a different color, but in my case, I'm just going to keep it very simple and keep it all under that same color. Okay, we also have this welcome right here, which we didn't get to yet, but we will. And we're going to click on publish. So right now we have the same background and let's continue. Typography is if you want to change uh, all kinds of things like heading colors, text colors, link uh, colors after they clicked on it, uh, hero text colors and so forth. No need to get into it now, but that's where you can control that. Then you've also got buttons. So the way that your buttons look on your website, not going to go over it now because it's a little bit advanced, it's a little bit technical. It's easy, but it's not very important for you to know right from the start because you can make sales without that. Okay, then you've got your general stores layout, not going to touch it. Then we've got menus. So so here you want to create menus and customize the links that we see here on the footer and on the menu. We're not going to do that now, but we're going to do it soon. Then we've got widgets. So widgets are simply these things that you can add to your website to make it more optimized, uh, all kinds of different widgets. For now, I'm not, not going to get into it. Then you've got the regular homepage settings. So the homepage is the homepage. So when they go to productchasers.com, this is what they're going to see. They're not going to go to uh, the blog page or to any other page by default. And the post page, of course, is the blog page. We're not going to touch that. You can add new pages, but again, more advanced stuff. No need for that to start making sales. And you've got WooCommerce. So here you can add a store notice if you want people to uh, read a certain message when they enter your website, uh, your product catalog, what you wanted to show, but we don't need to touch any of that right now. And additional uh, CSS is advanced, of course. So that's pretty much it. We have a very, very basic layout without diving too deep inside, but that is all the things that you can control in the theme's appearance. So editing the store theme consisted of what colors we're using, uh, what fonts we're using, the logo image that we added here, the favicon that we added in the tab up top and the background colors for the header menu and the footer menu. But what about the rest of these options right here? This is all a part of our homepage, which we will edit right now. So I'm going to exit the theme editor. And now I'm going to go to the pages section right here on the left side. And here we can see that I already have a blog page, a card page, a checkout page, a home page, which is the front page, my account page and the shop page. Okay, so all of this, of course, was created automatically for me. I didn't have to create these pages. And I'm going to edit now my home page. Okay, so I'm going to click on edit. Welcome to the block editor. Okay, so I'm just going to close this dialog because I already know how to use it. So this is actually that blog editor that I mentioned a few minutes ago. And as you can see right here, it's a little bit technical, could look a little confusing, but let me show you how to work around this. So first is the home page. So here I'm going to write laser hair epilator. And as you can see, we can't see the, the, the header and the footer because right now we're only editing the home page, which was right in between them. So that's what we're doing right now. We're actually editing a page and not the theme. Okay, so we've got this welcome message right here. I can click on it and then here I can choose a different image to use. So maybe here would be a good chance to use a different image. So when I click on the background image right here, I have this block editor here with my options. So I can click here on replace and then open my media library, media library. And yeah, we have it right here. Okay, so I'm going to select this image right here. And this is how it came out. So let's kind of play around with the stretching and make it better. So let's give it a fixed background is not going to do it. Repeated background could probably work. This could work, but let's see if we can do it better. So I can change the focal point view and make it maybe show this. I'm not sure if we can zoom out on it. Okay, but it looks good. I'm just going to add a little bit of transparency so it won't, you know, be the thing that stands out the most. And uh, that's it. I'm going to leave it like this. But of course, change the text that we see here. Okay, but right now I'm going to save all of this. I'm going to click on update. And now I'm going to click on the text. I'm going to make this in bold so that we can see it better. So welcome. And now 
I'm going to show you guys something. I'm not sure if you guys know about it yet, but there is a cool AI tool called ChatGPT that's gonna help us brainstorm some really good lines to write. Now, if you made it this far, you're about to learn some of the best bonuses that we have in this video. So good job being patient and showing that you're serious about your work. If you wanna learn more about what ChatGPT can do for you, like writing product titles, product descriptions, full blog articles, and so much more that it can do, check out this video on how to use ChatGPT for dropshipping. And if you want the link to it, just let me know in the comments below and I will happily send it to you. So what I'm gonna do with ChatGPT right now is let them know about the product that I wanna sell, okay? So let me just copy the item's description and I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, I'm creating an online website for a product, please generate five catchy slogans to use for this product. Then I'm gonna hit shift enter and paste all that text so that ChatGPT will know what the product is that I'm trying to add to my stores. So the first result is say goodbye to unwanted hair with our laser hair removal device, that's already good. Get silky smooth skin in just a few simple steps. Experience the power of laser hair removal with our advanced device. Unleash the full potential of your beauty with our laser hair removal technology and, and eliminate unwanted hair and achieve the perfect look. Let's go with this one. Unleash the full potential of your beauty. I'm gonna copy that sentence. Then we're gonna head back to the block editor. And here I'm going to paste instead of that welcome message. Unleash the full potential of your beauty with our laser hair removal technology. I'm gonna change that to with our laser hair epilator technology. And I'm not gonna keep this text here at the bottom because I just think it's too small and not too many people are going to be able to uh, read it. So I'm just gonna remove this block. And here, maybe we'll add some functions to the text to just make it stand out a little bit more because there's uh, all of that image in the background and it's blending in too much. This background color is not gonna work. Let's maybe add a gradient. And I'm gonna capitalize the first letter of each word. I'm gonna go with this colorful background uh, again, Put more hours into work into your website and don't make it look, you know, this spammy, but I really wanna show you these options that you can really play around and customize it for whichever way you see fit. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave this and uh, maybe update it later. And so that is this block right here. I'm going to click on update and let's check out our website so far. So the last time we checked it out, it looked like this. Let's refresh it. Okay, so now we also have this section right here. Unleash the full potential of your beauty with our laser hair epilator technology. And of course, we have the top menu up here. We're going to change the menus here soon. Uh, we have this, and now let's just show the product right away. Now, in order to show my product on the front page, first I need to import my product to my store, and then of course, I'm going to continue optimizing my page, okay? My front page and my product page and all of that. But let's add the product right now to our stores. And for that, I'm going to use, of course, AutoDS, where I can completely automate my dropshipping business when it comes to price and stock monitoring, automatic orders, an easy customer service platform, price automation settings, and so much more that we have going on. Can go over everything right here, but if you want to scale your business the right way, you have to add automation so that you can sell hundreds or even thousands of products and having every part of the process automated for you. So without diving too deep into it, register for your account on AutoDS, and once you're inside, on the left side, you're gonna click on the stores, then we're gonna click on add store, and we're going to choose WooCommerce store. Okay, now I'm gonna click continue. Now I need to enter my store URL. So here I'm going to enter productchasers.com and then we're gonna click on add store. Now it's taking me to the WooCommerce and AutoDS connection. So AutoDS will like to connect to your store and I'm going to click on approve. Now, how simple was that? The WooCommerce store is now added to the AutoDS platform and I can start my business automation using AutoDS. So I'm just going to unselect all of the other stores that I have here, and I'm going to only select WooCommerce. Okay, so now managing only my WooCommerce store instead of all my stores at once, and I can start adding products to my WooCommerce store. So let's already do that. We already know what product we're gonna add. It's this one right here, and now I'm gonna show you some cool tactics on what you can do to create a really good looking product page and really make it unique and stand out more than any other pages that you saw when you were searching for your competitors. So here, I'm going to just hover over the URL. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna head back to AutoDS. I'm gonna click on add products. I'm gonna go with single product because it's just one. And I'm gonna add the URL right here, the products URL, publishing to my product chasers website using AliExpress China as the supplier in this example. Okay, and I'm gonna click on edit now quick. And using the edit now quick, it's actually adding it to the drafts section of my store where I can optimize the product before publishing it to my store and having it go live. But I could also just publish it right away and also work from WordPress, but it is easier for me to work through AutoDS. Okay, and in just a few seconds, the drafts process is complete and the product is now on my drafts page. So we can see it right here. I'm gonna open up the editor right here. And of course, I'm not going to keep this really bad title with all these numbers in the beginning. 
Uh, and overall, I'm just going to create a much, much better title than flashes, eight levels, laser epilator, permanent IPL, photo epilator, blah, 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 blah. So let's first of all, write a good product title. So here I'm going to head back to chat GPT, our good artificial intelligence friend. That's absolutely free to use. So what I'm going to do right now is it already remembers our chat. It already remembers the product that we're talking about. So I'm just going to tell it, write three good product titles for this product. Okay. So the first one is laser hair removal device achieve silky smooth skin in a few simple steps. Second one, advanced hair removal technology, say goodbye to unwanted hair. And the third is unleash your beauty potential. Um, it, it's more like models, I want product titles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to revise my question. I'm going to get the title that we had so far. And now in ChatGPT, generate three engaging product titles for this product. Now I'm going to paste that product title. So. I'm kind of starting a new chat here and I want to have a fresh start and see what it can generate just by using the title that's on AliExpress. The first one, effortlessly remove unwanted hair with the eight level laser epilator, pain-free permanent hair removal with the IPL photo epilator and the ultimate solution for smooth skin, the laser hair removal depiladora. I'm going to go with epilator, but I'm going to take this title right here and head back to AutoDS. And in the draft section right here, I'm going to change the product title to the ultimate solution for smooth skin the laser hair removal epilator. Okay, that's the title. I'm gonna keep the tags uh, like this. Uh, I'm not gonna go over all the stuff right here. I'm just gonna enable uh, price and stock monitoring and automatic orders. And now we have the product description. Okay, so here we have a really not so good description given to us by uh, a Chinese seller. And uh, it's, the English isn't good, the grammar isn't good, we need to fix it. So for example, like this one right here, after turning on the machine, short press the emission button for, so the English here anyway isn't good. And what we're gonna do is we're going to copy all of this text, head back to ChatGPT, and we're going to ask it to rewrite this product description. I also like to add use bullet points and emojis because it's much more friendlier to read this type of text. Then we're gonna paste all that text and hit enter. Okay, now let's see what good title ChatGPT is gonna generate for us for this product. Okay, introducing the laser hair removal equipment. Perfect for long-term hair removal results. You can remove your hair about a million times. Comes with a free gift of glasses and a shaver. Uh, so we've got the size specifications, uh, manual in all these types of languages, power levels one through eight, main function, hair removal, additional function, skin rejuvenation, and acne reduction, uh, and more technical specifications, triple security protection with a nice lock emoji. So bullet lists on that, humanized design concept with more information on that. And just look at the wonderful job that ChatGPT is doing to create a wonderful product description, which looks much, much better than this bunch of text and of course the english is perfect in terms of grammar and there is no plagiarism so you can see right here that it's continuing to write and now it's finished with the last note here at the end so i'm going to take all of this product description which came out really really wonderful and i'm going to add that to the draft section of my store in the product description okay so we have all of that here i'm going to remove what we had from aliexpress and keep only what i just added Okay, so now it looks really, really good. And I'm gonna click on save, just to save the info that we did so far. So we've got a good title and we've got a good description. Next, we've got variations. So here you can see that the AutoDS system imported all of the variations from AliExpress to this page. So we have all of these colors, all of the, the, all of the different plug types. And in total, we've got 36 different variations. So we have a lot to offer and it only took us a minute to add all of this information to our website. Now, if I click on edit on one of these variations, you can see that we have full control, including how much fees we're paying. So for example, if you're paying a 15% fee and you want to make 30% profit on top of that, then in this case, you need to sell it for 51.46. And I always like to round my cents to 0.97 or 0.99. In this case, it'll be 50.97 and I'll make almost $10 in profit if of course that really was my break-even fee. And now I'm going to click on save. And I also have, I don't know if you noticed, but include shipping price. So even if my suppliers do not include a shipping price, AutoDS will automatically take the shipping price from the supplier, add that to our buy price, and of course calculate the right selling price accordingly and keep our profit margin. So we can see that everything here was automated for us really, really well. And you can also make bulk changes. So if you want to change, let's say your break even and your profit percentage, you can just select all the variations, click on edit and change whatever it is that you want. Okay, next you've got the products images. So as I mentioned, everything got imported from AliExpress to our product page. We don't need to touch anything here, but you do have an advanced image editor if for example you want to add text or if you want to crop out things so you have all the options down here not going to get into it now but know that it exists 
And there's the item specifications, which of course everything here was automated for us. So we have all the item specifications so that our buyers will understand exactly what they are getting and what this product has. I'm done. I'm gonna click on save and import. And in just a couple of minutes that it took me to work on this product, I will now have about 40 different variations of this laser hair epilator uploaded to my WooCommerce store. So I'm done here in AutoDS. Let's go back to WooCommerce. So back to the WooCommerce menu, I'm gonna click on products on the left side to show you that the product went through successfully and what it looks like. So here on the products page, we can see all the products that we have. Now I'm going to remove everything besides this product, of course, for the laser hair epilator that we uploaded. But the rest of these is just a demo for the free storefront theme, which I don't really need because I'm not gonna use any of those images. So I'm just going to select all of them besides, of course, the product that we just up. And in bulk actions, I'm going to move it to move to trash. Okay, then I'm gonna click on apply. Then I'll only have that one product. And let's just see that in a second. Okay, so all of those products move to the draft and now we only have this. Okay, so the ultimate solution for uh, smooth skin, laser hair removal epilator. Let's click on edit and see that all the information that we had actually went inside. Okay, so here we have the product's title. And we have the permalink right here. So you can also change the slug. The slug is the last part of the URL. So here in this example, it's laser hair epilator, which makes sense. So productchasers.com slash product slash uh, laser hair epilator. We can also change the slash product if we change the name of this page in the pages section, but we're not going to get into that now. So here we go. Introducing the laser hair removal equipment. I'm going to put this in bold just to make it look better. But this is everything that ChatGPT pretty much generated for us and did a really, really good job at it. And this is what we need for our product page. If I continue scrolling down, you can see that you have control over more things like the product's data. So inventory, if you want, you can add uh, things like SKUs, uh, shipping. So what is the uh, weight of this unit and the dimensions, uh, link products and more, but we don't need to get into it now. And that's pretty much it. So we have this product. I'm gonna, just gonna click on update to update the text changes that I made here with the bold. And so now we can see that the product is ready. So I'm ready to add it to my front page. So now let's go back to the front page editor. If you don't remember where it is, just go to your pages and edit the front page right here. Okay, so that is what we're seeing here. And let's continue. So up until now we did all of this. And now we have all these blocks, which I don't need. I wanna show my product right now. So I'm just gonna hover over every block. I'm gonna click on it and click on backspace just to remove all these blocks that we don't need and add whatever blocks we do need. Now we can add these blocks using the add widget function. I talked about widgets, but I didn't show you. I will show you it now. But for now, I'm just going to remove all of these text fields and all of these extra blocks and we're just going to add them on our own. So I didn't really need the theme in the first place, but it's easy to start with the theme and uh, slowly uh, work your way down. So here we have an option to add a new block. So I'm just gonna click on the plus down here below, add block, and here we can choose whatever widget we want. For example, I wanna add a new product, so I'm gonna search for the word product. And here I can add, let's see, product filters, product row, product search, uh, products beta, should be this one, okay? Let's try it out. And it already knows what product, it already chose that product because I only have uh, one product. And in select options, this should be the variation chooser and the product's title is right here and the price ranges for all the variations inside. And another way to add these widgets is also to click on the plus button up here and you can pretty much do the same thing here, okay? You have all these patterns. So if you wanna create a page that just looks like this, like a template for a page and then create your uh, page on top of that, you can easily do that here through patterns but right now we're on blocks. So you can also add your widgets through here. So you can see all the options that you have. You can add uh, different text options. You can add images, galleries, audio files, uh, video files, which will also add uh, the AliExpress video that we have from there. Uh, different designs, buttons, groups, uh, and the widgets that I mentioned. So uh, posts, categories, lists, archives. Let's see what options we have here for products. It's probably the same. So we have products beta, products by category, by tags, by attribute, featured category, featured product. Let's try featured product. It'll probably show it even better. So I'm gonna go with featured product. Nope, in this case, it's gonna show this. So I don't really like it. And that is why you need to play around with all your options and see what option is gonna look best on your website. So I'm just gonna keep the product that we added here. It looks good and I'm gonna click on update. Okay, so let's see what's next. I don't know what this widget is doing here, so I'm just gonna click on that block and click on backspace, okay? Update the website, and let's take a look right now. So up until now, we had all these categories that we don't need. We remove the images, we remove the text. Let's refresh the page right now. Okay, so here we have again the logo, uh, the cover image, the banner, and we have the product right here, okay? It looks very basic right now, but I really wanna go through all the steps and make sure that you guys, when you get to it, put more hours of work into it than what I'm putting now because you can't really create a website in just one hour, but you wanna know where all the tools are so that you can completely customize it and make it your own. 
In any case, if we click on the product, we'll go inside the product page and see everything that we have here. So we have all of the product's images all uploaded onto the product page, along with the title, the price ranges, and here you can select your colors. So you can choose whatever variations you want, like I can go with the black model and choose the EU plug, and it's going to show me that image, okay? So here you can choose whatever you want, you can see how much we have in stock, and add it to your cart. So here the customer is going to add it to cart and check out. Of course, they've got the product's information right here. And everything right here is in a default view without jumping into it and really customizing how everything looks, but you know how to control everything and where you have those options. Now, if I would have went with another widget like uh, adding a featured product, it would have looked like this, but even though the shop now looks pretty good, but I just think it's too long and I think that this one just came out a little bit nicer. Uh, so of course, play around with the different options that you have and select which one best suits your store. Now, of course, you can add a featured products, you can add more products, you can add accessories and really fill up this page and make it look good. But for now, I'm just going to keep it uh, as a one product. Now let's add a video showing what this product can do. Okay, we can add the video to the home page, we can add it to the product page. But for now, let's get those videos and add it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to AliExpress. But for here, I need a different extension. I need an extension that also can download AliExpress videos. And here you're going to search for an AliExpress video downloader. And I could go with any one of these tools like this one right here. But I need to get to much, much more things in this video and it's already too long. So use an extension that, that can download videos from AliExpress, download the videos that you see right here, and then all that you need to do is head back to your product page or to your home page. You can add it also here and also there. And when you're adding another widget, which is what we're going to do right here, I'm going to click on the plus to add another uh, block and I'm going to click on video. So here we can add a video, uh, you know, that you downloaded from your supplier that I wanted to do, but let's just make it quicker. I'm going to add a YouTube embedded video. Um, I searched for a hair removal tool, this one looks pretty close to what we're selling right here. But this is just as an example, we've got this uh, nice lady here with these uh, really funny facial expressions. So I'm just going to click on share. So I'm going to click on copy, head back here and embed that URL. Okay, so it embedded the video right here below the product. And of course, I can do the same on the product page. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to update the front page. And now let's also go to the product page. So I'm going to click on products, and I'm going to edit the product that we uploaded. And I think we can add it maybe even before the explanation. So I'm going to click on add media, insert from URL. And this is the URL right here. And I'm going to click insert into product. Okay, so it's going to embed that video right here. Okay, so let's take a look at the video that we added and how our front page looks so far. Okay, so we've already seen all of this. I'm just going to scroll down where we have the product. However, there are two things that are bothering me here. So one, you can see that the video here came out way, way too big and it's not even being centered in the middle. And it's the same goes for the product right here. We want it to be in the center. We want it to look good. We want everything to be aligned well. So let's go ahead and fix that right now. So I'm going to go back to the home page editor. So in this case, I need to edit my front page. Okay, so I'm going to go to manage pages. I can also click on pages on the left side. And we've got the main page, which is right here, the front page, laser hair epilator. So I'm going to click on edit. And now let's go back down to that block that's bothering us. So that's this block right here. So you guys can see that we have a block and inside this block we have the product and the video. And because we added both of them, we can't really align it to the center or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new block and in that new block, I'm going to add the product and I'm gonna create another block for the video. So let's do that now really quick. I'm gonna click on the plus right here to add a new block and it's going to be a featured product. And of course we are going for the product that we all know. Okay, so I'm just going to go with that one. Okay, and next I'm going to add the video. So let's click on plus YouTube. Now we need the URL. So let's get it from here. Let's click on the share button. Now we've got the link right here. So I'm just going to paste that right here and click on embed. Okay, now we have the video and it looks like it's being centered. So first of all, let's kill off this block because we don't need it anymore. Okay, so I just hit backspace and that block is now dead. Okay, now I'm going to update the page and let's go back to productchasers.com. So as you can see right here, the product is aligned to the left. The video is way too big and aligned to the left. Let's see if we were able to fix that. So I'm going to refresh and there we go. So now everything is aligned. First, we have the product, then we have the video. And of course, we can change the layout of the product. So 
If they click on shop now, they're going to go to the product page and here they can choose their variations. And this is everything that we saw so far with the product page, with everything that we made, with everything that we did already, and it looks good. However, we may not like this specific design, so we can always click on the image and here on the right side, you have all kinds of options like like here, there is no product description, so I'm just going to remove it. And now the text is more centered on the inside. I can show the price or not show the price. I can have a fixed background, but it doesn't look that good because then we're seeing the corner or repeated background. But in this case, the image is big enough, so it doesn't really need to be repeated. Then we've got this little toggle right here. Image fit, none or cover doesn't make a big difference. And focal point picker. So here you can choose what part of the image you want to show. OK, so you can play around with it. You can use a different product to show instead of featured product. You can choose another option and it'll show you another type of of design layout for that product. But in any case, here you have the options to change what we're seeing over here. But overall, it looks pretty good. We've got the banner, we've got the product, we've got the video. The only thing that's missing here on the front page is the footer menu. And the only thing that may be missing here on the front page may be some customer testimonials to talk about this product. So before I show you how to add customer testimonials, I want to first set up the navigation menu so that we'll have a footer menu and a header menu with all of the right pages inside. Then I'm going to show you some cool WordPress plugins plugins to use on your WooCommerce store and we'll continue from there. So before we start setting up our footer and our header menu, we first need to set up all the pages that we want to actually have inside. So one of those pages are the legal pages that we're obligated to have. So that actually includes our shipping policies, our return policies, our payment policies, terms of service. You can even add frequently asked questions, contact us, of course, who we are and all of that. So how can we create those pages as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible? Watch what I'm about to show you. So there's a link in the blog article below this video, which will lead you to a cool plugin called Privacy Policy Generator. So this is a WordPress plugin and I'm going to recommend some more plugins soon. I'm even going to show you another one to import customer reviews so that we can really get a good looking product page with customer testimonials. And that, of course, will help the customers get the confidence that they need to check out on our store. But before that, this is a plugin and what plugins are basically are add ons to our store that can do all kinds of things like in this case, create legal pages for us. So talk less, do more. Let me show you exactly what this does. So there are two ways to add plugins to your store. One is to download the file right here and then to upload it into the plugins page. And the second is to simply go to the plugin section. So let's go back to WordPress. And here on the left side, I'm going to click on plugins. There's install plugins or add new. In this case, we don't have any install plugins. We want to add a new one. So I'm going to click on add new. And here you have a few options. One is you can upload a plugin. So if I would have downloaded the plugin from right here, from this page, then I would have a zip file downloaded on my computer and then I would have to upload that here. Or I could search for plugins from here, download and install them on my WordPress account. So let's keep it simple and do it like that. So I'm going to search for privacy policy generator, but it should find it. Here we go. Privacy policy generator, terms and conditions generator for WordPress plugin, WP legal pages. Now there are others here that can also do it for you. So you will have to test out the different ones and see which one is good for you, but they should all work pretty well. Let's go with this example. So I clicked on install. And as you can see right now, it's installing and that's it. It already installed. So I'm just going to click on activate in order to activate the plugin and start working on it. So now it's installed. And every time you install a plugin, you're going to see it on the left side on your menu. So you can see right here under plugins, I have a new plugin called WP Legal Pages. So I'm just going to click on it. And here I can actually start working with the plugin. OK, so the first thing I did was accept the terms of use. Now I want to configure the details of the personalized pages. So let's click on configure details and see what options we have there. So the domain name is already filled in business name. We can also call it product chasers. Um, this is all basic information. Let's see what else we have. So here there's an option under compliances to add the legal pages to the footer menu. So you can do that, but I want to show you how to do that manually because there are more pages that I want to add. Then we have short codes and all kinds of things. So anyway, those are just some of the options that you have, but they're not mandatory. Now I'm going to click right here on the left side under settings. I'm going to click on create legal page. Welcome to the legal pages wizard. OK, so we can go for a standard privacy policy, terms of use, DMCA and standard CCPA for California based users. In this case, I'm just going to create the standard privacy policy for this example, and you can continue with the rest of them. OK, so select the language English the name, the website. So this is the information that we filled in in the settings one step before this one. I'm going to click on next. OK, what kind of personal information is collected? So here you're letting the plugin know what types of information you're gathering from the customer, like when he checks out on your website and when he enters his payment information and all that. So we got the customer's name, email, phone, address, social media profile information. 
we don't necessarily have to ask for that, but it's enough to even ask for it, then you have to fill it in. But in this case, we're not really asking for their uh, social media profiles and we can keep the rest checked out. If required by law or subpoena, will you disclose personal information of users to law enforcement agents? Most likely we'll have to, so we're gonna leave that on yes. Now let's click on next. And lo and behold, we have a privacy policy. So it's that simple. Privacy policy, welcome to productchasers.com, the site, and the rest of the privacy policy information with the type of information that you're collecting according to what you filled in. So as you see, Product Chasers is being filled in and your email address and everything else, all the rest of the information that you gave it. So it's this easy to create your policy pages. So what I'm gonna do now is click on create and edit. So it's actually going to create this as a page for me. And that's what I just did. So now I have a page, it's called privacy policy and it's everything that it just created for me. So the only thing that I need to do now is click on publish and the page will be active on my store and anyone can go and see it. But before that, I just need to add it to one of my menus so that people will actually know that it exists. Okay, so what we're going to do now is see what pages we have, first of all, just to make sure that I have enough pages to add to my header and footer menu. So I clicked on pages and as you can see, we have a blog page. I still need to show you how to write a good blog article and I'm going to show you a, a neat trick soon. The cart page when they add to cart, check out the front page my account after they create an, an account, if they create one, the privacy policy that we just created now, and the shop which shows the products. So now that I have that, I wanna create a blog article and add that to the blog page. So right now we're looking at pages and a post belongs under the blog page. So as you see right here on the left side, we have posts. What I'm gonna to have to do is create a post which is the actual blog article. Then I'm gonna connect that post to the blog page so that if anyone enters my blog page, they'll be able to see all of our actual blog articles, okay? And now we're going to write and it's only gonna take a couple of minutes and it's gonna be completely unique. Unique. Let's go. So here on the left menu, I'm going to click on posts. Then I'm going to click on add new because as you can see right here, we have zero posts, zero blog articles. Okay, so we got the title and the text. So what are we going to do? What article are we going to write? Here, I'm going to get help from my best friend called ChatGPT. Now, by the time you're watching this video, I don't know if ChatGPT is still free, but right now, everybody's taking advantage, or at least all the smart people are taking advantage of this great artificial intelligence tool. And when I mean smart people, I mean, of course, the ones that actually figured out about this tool. And if you're following our YouTube channel, then you are way, way ahead of your competition. And if you don't have ChatGPT, or if by the time you're watching this video, it's maybe not free anymore or whatever, it could be free forever. But there are many AI tools out there like Jasper and Copy AI and Writer.ai and many others that could help you write unique blog articles. And of course, you can also write it on your own without getting any help from any AI. But right now we're looking to save time, automate our businesses while still having a good passive income from our automated business. So what we're gonna do now is speed things up with ChatGPT. So we're actually looking for a blog article to write something around this product so that if someone is searching for something that's relevant to this product, they're gonna see our blog article on Google, read our blog article, get good value from it, and continue to our website to the product page and hopefully check out with the product. So we need to write a good blog article around this product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, generate five blog article ideas about laser hair epilators and let's see what it could generate for us so the first one is the science behind laser hair epilation how it works and its benefits comparing laser hair epilation to traditional hair removal methods laser hair epilation for men a guide to hair removal for men laser hair epilation for sensitive skin and laser hair epilation at home pros and cons of do-it-yourself hair removal with a laser epilator i'm going to go with that one because this one can speak to everyone in general, and it also has things that people are looking for. So they're gonna use it at home, so it connects to home, and they're gonna wanna know about the pros and cons when you're doing it yourself with a laser hair epilator. So let's go ahead and write a blog article about this one. How it works and its benefits is too simple, and it's just how it works. It doesn't really go into detail about what you can do with it. And epilation for men, so then what about the women? And for sensitive skin, well, what about the ones who don't have sensitive skin? So this is one blog article that can reach a broader audience. So I'm going to start with that one. So I'm going to get this title and then I'm going to tell ChatGPT. Well, first of all, we're going to have this as a title. So I'm going to go back to the add new post and I'm going to copy this one and make that our title. Okay, now we need the text. So what are we actually going to write? So brainstorm five headings for the article 
titled what we just talked about. So now it's going to actually brainstorm the topics that we should be writing about inside the title, inside the blog article that we chose. So do it yourself hair removal, the convenience of laser hair epilation at home, the pros and cons of using a laser ep epilator for at home hair removal, is at home laser hair epilation safe and effective, the cost effectiveness of doing it yourself and making the decision comparing at home laser hair removal to professional treatments. Okay, so these are our headings. Let's start writing about each one. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy the first heading in the blog article, head back to WordPress. And on the first block, I'm going to type slash heading and of course choose heading. And the heading here is going to be that title. Okay. I'm just even going to make it bold to make it stick out even more. So this is the first heading that we have. You can see right here, it's a heading two, and I'm going to click enter so that we can actually start writing under this heading. Now, usually what you would do is also add images to the blog articles. You can add a featured image. So we can do that. If we click right here on post, instead of block, we're going to click on post. And here you can add a featured image, which the reader will be able to see even on Google when he's searching and he sees your page, but you can also add images, of course, inside the blog articles. So let's say under the title you could add it which by the way, in this case, we need to fix the title because you can see right here on the left side that it's just a paragraph. So what you're going to do here is use the block editor and type slash title. And this way you're going to create a title for the post. Okay. So it knows that that's the post title. So I can just remove this paragraph here on top, which of course wasn't right. So make sure you're using slash title for the titles, unless it automatically gave you uh, an option to add a title. In some cases, I guess it will. And of course, add your headings with slash heading. So the first heading is here and now we can start actually writing the text. Now, again, you can add images anywhere you want. For example, go to the products images and add them in any place that you want. Remember that you're using a block editor even for the post. So here I can just write slash and I can see all of the triggers that I can use to add to the blog article. So here I'm just going to write image. And then here, of course, I can add images and just make the blog more friendly. But we already know that. Let's put that on the side and continue writing this blog article. So back to chat GPT, I'm going to tell it to write some paragraphs about the first heading. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to tell it write three paragraphs for the heading and let it know what heading we're talking about and hit enter. So now it's actually going to write about that one. And what we're going to do is copy the same practice for each and every heading until we get to the conclusion at the end. Okay. So as you can see right here, it's writing a pretty good looking article. So laser hair pilation has become a very popular method of hair removal in recent years, offering long lasting results and minimal pain compared to tra traditional methods. The technology has advanced to the point where laser epilators are now available for use at home. Moving on, one of the main benefits. So here we're talking, of course, about the benefits of it because this is the heading. Do it yourself hair removal, the convenience of laser hair epilation at home. And however, it is important to note that while the epilation can be convenient, it should be done with caution. So of course, we need to be careful. And in any case, this is a pretty good way to start the article. And if you would like to see, I will run a plagiarism checker just to make sure that this blog article isn't already being used somewhere else with the same texts and all of that. So what I'm going to do right here is through Grammarly, I'm going to go through their plagiarism checker. So I'm just going to paste that text right here. Then I'm going to click on plagiarism down here and let's see what we got. Let's give it a second. And we've got 7% plagiarism, which is almost nothing. So the technology has advanced to the point where it is considered plagiarism, but anyone can use that text. And also this one right here. However, it is important to note that while. So these are words that anyone can use and this isn't plagiarism. This text, is unique and of course we can use that for our blog article so i'm going to copy that and this is the first heading so we already have the first heading down now we can move to the next heading so slash heading okay now we can see that i have a heading text space right here and we can move to the next heading which is this one the pros and cons of using a laser hair epilator for at home removal okay so that's the next heading right here then i'm going to hit enter to write the paragraph under that and I'm going to tell ChatGPT the same thing. Now it remembers your conversation. So everything we did here, it remembers. So I could tell it because the last thing I told it to do was write three paragraphs. I could tell it do the same here and it knows exactly what to do. So now we're going to get three paragraphs for this. Of course, you can change around. You can make two paragraphs, four paragraphs. Don't make it too much because people are not looking to read a book but they do want the right information so that they'll learn about the product in the best way as possible. And this is a rinse and repeat process. So once it finishes writing this, we're going to copy, we're going to paste it back to our post and we're going to publish the post once we're done with all the headings. However, in this case, the video is long enough and I think that you guys get the point. So let's just copy this and finish up with that blog article and you can continue using it on your niche 
and write as many blog articles as you can. You can easily write 10 blog articles per day using this method that automates everything for you and writes good, unique blog articles. So now I'm just gonna click on publish. Okay, and again, I'm gonna click on publish. So now it's actually going to publish the blog article. And now all I need to do is add it to my pages. Okay, so I can click on view post just to see what it came out like. And you can see right here, so we've got the blog article, here's the title, here's the first heading, here is the text, and then the second heading, which I didn't put into bold, just like I did on this one. So of course, preview your work and make sure that it looks good. So if anyone would now search on Google for laser hair ablation at home or pros and cons of uh, hair removal with laser ep ablators or something close to that and your article is good, it should rank well on Google, make it to the first page and that way you're gonna get free organic traffic to your store without having to pay all kinds of sources to bring traffic to your store because now it's coming automatically because you already did the work. Before we finish up, let's go back to the post editor because I want to show you guys a few more neat tricks that you need to know about. So the first one is the URL. You can see right here that it took the whole title and added that to the URL. So, so the way to get to this blog article is productchasers.com slash laser hair epilation at home pros and cons of hair removal. It's way, way too long and it's not under slash blog. So if you want to have a blog page and put all of your articles under your blog page so that you'll have it all organized there, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have productchasers.com slash blog slash the article's name, but we're also going to make a shorter URL. So what I'm going to do first is make a shorter URL, then I'll show you how you can add it to your blog page. Okay, so here is the permalink. This is the last part of the slash that you see here in the URL. So productchasers.com slash we're going to have blog slash all of this title right here. Let's just make it laser epilator right there. Okay, you know what? Maybe even laser hair epilator okay and this is going to be the last part of the url so it's going to be productchasers.com slash blog which i'll teach you to do now slash laser hair epilator so let's see how that works right now i'm just going to save it like this and of course you can add it to a category in this case i don't really need any because it's my only blog article and i won't have any categories but you get the point point. and now here's how to add all of it to your slash blog so that you can put all of your blog articles under your blog section so let's go back to the wordpress menu and on the left side under settings we're going to look at two things here so the first one is reading so we're going to click on that and here you can see reading settings so your home page displays first either your latest post or a static page. Of course, we're gonna go with a static page. So the home page is always going to show the laser hair epilator page, which is our front page. And our posts page is our blog. So every time we write a post like what we just did, it's going to be added to the blog. But how do we add the slash blog in the URL? just so that we'll have a good organizational structure for our website and it won't be productchasers.com slash blog post, but rather slash blog slash blog post. And that way we have everything organized in a much, much better fashion. So this is the first thing that we're gonna do. Make sure that your post page is on the blog and that your home page is of course on your front page and that you're looking at a static page. The next thing under settings is permalinks. So we're gonna click on permalinks and now your permalink structure should be on post name. So every time you create a new post, it's gonna be productchasers.com slash sample post. But in this case, we wanna add that slash blog. And of course you can make that slash whatever you want. But in this case, here's how you're gonna do it. We're gonna click on custom structure. And now whenever we have a new post, it's going to be productchasers.com slash blog slash post name and the post name is the title of the blog article so it's the last part that we put in the url in our case we just shortened it to laser hair epilators and of course you can add remove and edit anything you want like i could have slash blog slash category slash post name or whatever you want but in this case slash blog slash post name is enough for us so i'm going to leave it like this and i'm going to click on save changes permalink structure updated now let's go ahead and take a look so let's head back to productchasers.com and now we're going to click on blog and don't worry next we're going to fix all of this header menu that we have up here as well as the footer menu but let's click on blog because that's good for now so blog and we've got the laser hair epilator so I'm going to click on that article. And as you can see right now, the URL is productchasers.com slash blog slash laser hair epilator and not just productchasers.com slash laser hair epilator. So this is a blog article where we shortened the end part of the URL and we now added the slash blog to the URL to organize all of our blog posts to be here. And this is going to make your website better for Google, better for crawling, 
and better for getting free organic traffic as long as you have some really good blog posts in certain areas that people are actually searching for. Okay, so that's enough about the blog. Add your blog articles, use the help from AI to get that done even quicker and better for you. And now let's learn about how to set up our header menus and our footer menus. Okay, so what we're gonna do here on the left side is hover over appearance and we're gonna click on menus. Now remember, we don't have all the pages that we need so far. We, there are still some pages that we haven't created yet, like the contact us page, who we are, terms of service and all of that. But first of all, let's understand how to create these menus. Then later on, when we create these pages, we can easily add them to these menus. Okay, so the first menu is the header menu on top. So we're gonna call it header menu. And the menu settings, this is gonna be the primary menu. Okay, now I'm gonna click on create menu. And now you can see on the left side that I can start adding pages to the menu. So I'm gonna click on view all to be able to view all of my pages. And here I'm gonna choose, of course, the laser hair epilator, that's the front page the blog, cart, my account. I'm not gonna add checkout because they'll have that op option from the cart. We can add the my account, even though they don't have to create an account. So I'm gonna leave that out for now. And the privacy policy, I'm gonna add that on the footer. And the shop should show the products page, but we didn't actually create one yet. So let's just leave that out. So just the front page, the blog page, and the cart page. I'm gonna click on add to menu. And now we have these options here. Now I can drag and drop it if I want, for example, to see the cart before the blog, but in this case, it's a good structure. So we're gonna keep it like this. And you can also add a sub item. So the laser hair epilator, the blog can be under that, but in this case, we want it to be on the side. Okay, so right here, it looks good. And I'm just gonna click on save menu. And now if I go back to productchasers.com and I refresh the front page, lo and behold, now we have the front page, the blog and the cart. So that's exactly what we just added in the header menu and that's exactly what we're seeing up here. So now we have control over the header menu and it's the same explanation for the footer menu. So let's go back to the menus and here I'm gonna click on menus again to go back to the front menus page and create a new menu. This time it is the footer menu. So it's gonna be called footer and this is a secondary menu. Now what's important to note here is that the secondary menu option that we have, it's not the footer menu. So we have the primary menu, which is the header. Uh, the secondary and handheld is not footer. Secondary will show up right here. So privacy policy. So as you can see right here, it's not the right place. So what happened here was this theme does not support footer menus. Now that doesn't mean that we cannot have a footer menu. And if the theme would have supported it, then we would have had the option right here. So I'm not sure if it's a bug or if the theme really doesn't support it, but I'm gonna show you another way to get this footer menu to be shown on our front page. So what we're gonna do is go to the page editor and we're going to edit the front page. Now I'm not talking about the appearance and themes where we're actually editing the theme on the front page, but we're actually editing the front page itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on pages and then on the front page, I'm gonna click on edit. Now what I can do is, as you can see, the menus are more related to the theme itself. So you can see here that I cannot see the header menu when I'm editing the front page. So as you can see, we have this menu here, but that's related to the theme and not to the page. So here we don't see the footer and the header menus. However, because in the theme, I cannot create a footer menu, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it through the page editor. So now I'm on the front page editor and this lady's facial expression is, it's just a funny thing to work with. But so what I'm gonna do here on the bottom is I'm gonna click on add block. So as if I'm creating a new block and here I'm just gonna write the word navigation. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a widget or a block called navigation. And as you can see, it automatically added all of the links, all of the pages that I have, all the links to the pages right here, but I don't want all of these links right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the block, then I've got the block editor right here on the right side. And then what I'm gonna do here is under menu, instead of navigation, I'm gonna click on footer because we have a footer menu that we created. And once I click on that, you can see that the footer menu changed to the privacy policy page because that's the only page that we added so far to the footer menu. Okay, so I can keep this and I can also add more links as you can see right here. So I can add a link. And so actually what I can do here is I can add as many more links as I want to this footer menu. Okay, but right now we don't have any links to add. So we're just gonna keep it with the privacy policy and we're going to update our front page just like that. So now if I refresh productchasers.com, we've got the header menu. Of course, we need to add more pages there. And if I scroll down, then we have the footer menu here. Now don't mind the edit button. Whoever's viewing the site is not gonna see that. But here is another place where we can actually have our footer menu. Now, of course, we're gonna space it out. We're gonna put it more on the bottom. We're gonna structurize it more. But here I'm just showing you the technical stuff. And of course, you guys can get creative because this takes more time. And of course, you can see that this video 
run for long enough and good job with your patience so far this is a really in-depth tutorial and i hope that you are finding the value in it don't forget to like and share and also subscribe to our youtube channel if you appreciate the value that you're getting here so now that we understand the concepts of how to create a header menu and a footer menu i now want to show you how you can create a forms page so that you can create for example a contact us page and add that to your header menu so here we're going to use a plugin and soon we're going to talk more about plugins what other plugins you guys need to be working with but here we're going to go with a plugin that's already pre-installed on my wordpress menu and if it's not installed for you it's a free plugin just search for wp forms so this is the plugin right here let's go and take a look and create our new form so here i'm going to click on add new and we're going to simply going to create a very easy and simple contact us form it's going to turn it into a page then we're going to add that page to our header menu welcome to the form builder let's just click on let's go and what I want here is a simple contact form. So I'm just going to click on use template. And this is why we need plugins. It just simply creates things for us on the fly and in just a couple of minutes. Okay, so here you can customize everything that you want to have. So you saw on the general. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've got the general. So the form name is, we're going to call it contact us. Okay, then the form description. And this is just the settings. But let's start with the fields. So I'm going to click on fields. And the first field that we'll have is your name. So here, for example, you can call it first and last name and you can see that it's changing in here too and the format is first and last and in the description you don't really have to add something because it's obvious what they need to do here but you can write write your first and last name but that's obvious so we don't really need it and this is only for the name so you can see that it's not required but in this case it should be required maybe the last name is not but that's that you can rearrange everything that you see here so you can start first for example with the email address okay so here is the email you can write email address or whatever or whatever you want and of course a description and enable email confirmation it's not that friendly for for the user so don't leave that on and those are the field options so let's go back so what we've got so far is email address first and last name and what exactly do you want to write okay and that's it then they're going to click on submit and you will get the message on your dashboard you'll see that you have a message from your customer or it'll get sent to your email address and of course we can add as many more fields as you want so for example you can add a single line text right here to this form and write whatever you want here for example topic like what is the topic why are you reaching out to us and have the description here but that's just an example let's delete that and you have more things like a paragraph text a drop down menu or give them maybe a multiple choice so you can even run surveys and things like that, check boxes and so forth. But let's keep it super, super simple. I just want a contact us page. So let's leave it at that. And I'm gonna click on save. Okay, so we just created a customized contact us page and it just took us a couple of minutes. Now, how do we actually add it to our menus and to our pages? So what we're going to do next is head back to WordPress and under pages, we're going to add a new page. And this, of course, is going to be your contact us page. So I'm going to click on add new and under the title, I'm going to call it contact us. And I'm just going to write a quick text. Let us know what's on your mind and we'll answer you shortly. Now I want to add the next block. I want to actually add that menu. So I'm going to click on plus on the block editor. Sorry that you guys can't see it because of this extension. And now we're going to write WP forms. Okay. Cause I want to activate this widget. And now the plugin is asking me, what form do you want to add? So I'm going to click on the drop down menu and you can see that we have a contact us form because that's the one that we just created. And that's it. You can see the form is right here. I can preview the page and see how it came out. So let's take a look. Okay, cool. Let us know what's on your mind. We'll answer you shortly. Email address, first and last name and the comment message and click on submit. So cool. We got a contact us page and it took us just a couple of minutes to create thanks to the help of plugins. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this page because it it's done now I'm going to publish it so as you can see right here we have a url the page address is productchasers.com slash contact us so now we're going to go back to the menus so let's go back to the wordpress menu we're going to click on appearance and menus again go to that header menu so i'm going to click on this menu to edit and i'm going to select that and now what i'm going to do is click on contact us and add it to the menu Okay, so now it's going to be after the cart and i'm going to click on save menu and now on productchasers.com you can see the contact us button right here okay so that's the page we just created and that's how simple it is to create a contact us page now remember you need to create the rest of your pages the terms of service the shipping and return policies and all of that you can get help from chat gpt to do that for you you can get plugins that will create these pages for you and simply ask you for basic information like what's your business's name and all that just like we did with the first policy that we added and so that is pretty much simplified you don't need me to show you how to do that again you already know how to do it now you just need to work according to everything that i showed you in this video now be sure to check out our blog article 
to know about all of the legal pages that you need, but pretty much just name them all. So you've got the contact us page, you need an about us page, shipping policy, return policy, terms and conditions, privacy policy, and you can also add a frequently asked questions page, which is always a great thing to have because that way you're answering your customer's questions way before they even ask them and they won't even need to reach out to you and ask those questions. So just go ahead and continue with the checkout process. You can also get the help of ChatGPT to help you think of frequently asked questions that people have around this item, or just simply write the item's name on Google and see what questions pop up on Google. And that way you'll know that this is a question that many, many people are asking about this product and add that to your frequently asked questions. So add those legal pages, add them to the footer and header menus of your website, get help from the blog article to understand what's a good placement for each one. And now let's talk about plugins. So I already showed you a couple of plugins in this video live in action, like the WP forms, the WordPress forms to create the contact us page and the privacy policy page for our legal pages. Okay, so go ahead, continue with the rest of those pages. Let me know if you need help, by the way, below and I'll help you guys with every step of the way. But now let's talk about the recommended plugins to use. And I'm gonna show you a good plugin to import your customer's reviews for your product so that you'll get some social proof around your product and increase the chances of selling it right off the bat before your customers start writing their own customer reviews on your website. Okay, so right here you can see some of the best plugins that you should be using. The first one is called Monster Insights. This is a really good plugin to get analytics for your website. It connects with Google Analytics and its own algorithms to give you a really good detailed analytics view of what's going on on your website, what your customers are doing, what they're viewing, where they're bouncing off of your website, and so much more of their behaviors, of their demographics, and all of that. And the good thing here is that there's a free plan, and it's a free forever plan that you can use without the advanced features, of course, but even the free features are good enough to add this plugin, get those insights in your analytics, and of course, every plugin that you'll add, you will see it on the left side of your menu right here under plugins. Okay, so be sure to add Monster Insights. The second plugin is a simple plugin called Redirection, and what What's good about this is it simply creates redirects for your URLs inside your website. Now this is a more advanced technique, but now and then you will create pages and you won't use the right URLs that you actually want to use. And later on, you'll figure that out and then you'll want to start creating some redirects, but you don't want to miss all the traffic that you had up until now. And you don't want your audiences to go to a dead link because you created a new one. So this is a good plugin to use to create redirections for your website and not lose your data and also not have customers go to any dead pages. The next one is called Jetpack. This is a secure security tool for your website and it also helps optimize your website and speed it up when it notices things like plugins and other things that are slowing down your website. So with Jetpack, you have a free plan that's good forever. And of course you've got paid plan, just like almost any other plugin where you'll have more advanced features to speed up your website and more security options. But this is more than enough to get started with a free plan and secure your website as well as speed it up. The third plugin is Yoast SEO. Now again, they also have a free plan that you can use forever. And what's good about Yoast SEO is it helps your blog articles and your pages and your website website in general rank better on Google. It'll give you all kinds of tips like keywords you should be using, transition words, and all kinds of other things that you can do on your website to make sure that it ranks higher on Google. As we know, SEO stands for search engine optimization, and that's exactly what this plugin is going to do. Simply help you optimize your placement on Google, rank higher, and get your website seen by more visitors. The next plugin is WP Forms. I'm not going to go over that because I already showed you that plugin in action in this video, but there's another bonus plugin that I want to add and that of course is the review importer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to search for the right review importer. So I'm going to go to plugins and I'm going to click on add new. Now here I can search for any plugin that I want. So what I want is reviews. And in this case, I want to get it from AliExpress because that is the supplier. So let's see if we've got it. Customer reviews collector for WooCommerce, but I don't think this one is for AliExpress. So this is the plugin that you want to use in order to import reviews from places like AliExpress to your WordPress website. So it's called iReview, add reviews from AliExpress and Amazon to WooCommerce. You're going to have to have this plugin and you're also going to need to download and install their Chrome extension, which is free. And then you can follow this on page tutorial to understand how to use it. So search for iReview, which they type R-I-V and the word you and get to this page, download the extension, download the plugin, install, watch the on-screen tutorial and understand how you can import those reviews. But I want to show you something that's worth a little bit more than that. And I talked about it in the beginning of this video and I didn't want to show it up in until now because, well, because you'll have to have a yearly plan, which I believe is around $50 per year, if I'm not mistaken. But we are talking about the Elementor website builder. And I already gave you a small hint about this plugin. However, I didn't want to demonstrate it because of its cost. Not everybody wants to put a budget aside for this, but it's instead of having that block editor, this is the best version
version of a block editor with so many more functions. Let me give you a quick look. So I just installed the plugin. Now I'm going to activate it just to show you what options it has, including how to add all kinds of customer testimonials. Okay, in this case, I don't need to create an account. Let me just log in really quick. So, so I'm just going to skip everything. And this is just a small example of everything that you can do with Elementor. So this is just a random page called Elementor 185 inside our website. And as you can see right here, I've got plenty and plenty of options. These things with a lock sign means that it's for the premium version, but you also have the free version. So for example, if I want to create a heading, I can quickly search for it here or just add it from here inside the widget. Okay, so this is a heading just like we did with the blog article, but let's go to the more advanced stuff. And by the way, there's also a theme builder so you can completely build your theme from scratch. Uh, if I log in, I wouldn't see all of this upgrade, but let's just keep it at this for now. It's not very crucial because I'm not really going to do this, but I highly, highly suggest to use Elementor to either create your own theme or use a huge database of themes that are already available and completely optimize and customize your pages. Just look at all the options that you have here. So besides the normal stuff like adding videos and texts and all of that, I can also add Google Maps, WP Forms, of course, I can add icons, and then the more professional stuff that comes with a premium plan, like advanced forms and maybe a login page, a navigation menu, animated headlines, price tables, price lists, call to action buttons, testimonial carousel, which is great. So this is how you're going to get those customer testimonials and it'll actually be in this cool carousel effect on your website. Same thing for media, a customer reviews, table of contents, share buttons, countdowns, quotes, Facebook comments, so all kinds of social media buttons, a PayPal button, a playlist, and the list just goes on and on and on. And that's just for the page editor. You also have stuff for the site. So things that have to do with the website and I just clicked back by accident. But in, in any case, Elementor is going to make your job much, much easier. It's going to customize your site in a much, much better way. And I highly recommend to use it. If you've got a budget aside, you wanna save time and make your website look even better. I really wanted to create this video off of Elementor, but again, I'm taking into consideration that not everyone is gonna use it. So of course, I'm just gonna leave it on the side for a quick three minute explanation towards the end of the video, which is what I just did. But I highly suggest to use it and you'll create a website that looks much better than this in even a shorter amount of time. Now, of course, I am trying to move quicker. You can't really create a fully functional website with the best layout in just two hours, which is what I've been doing here. But I am giving you guys all the knowledge, all of the right steps, all of the right tools that you need so that you can create a much, much better looking website than the one that I created right here. But at the end of the day, we do have our website, we have our product page, it looks good, and anyone can come in right now and purchase the product. However, the only problem is, who even knows that this product exists? And that is why we have marketing. We need to learn how to market our store and how to get our audience in front of our store, our target audience, the right audience, to enter our product page and of course check out with the product. And for that, be sure to use our WordPress dropshipping cheat sheet, which I have available for you to use. All you have to do in order to gain access to this and learn about all of the best marketing methods, product research methods, best products to sell, best plugins, and everything else that I went over in this video, all you have to do, as you know, is comment hashtag WooCommerce. Let me know what you thought about this video and I will send you this cheat sheet. Okay, let's sum it up. In the beginning, we need to find a good product to sell with the product research methods that I mentioned to really be able to find and narrow down the products with the highest chance to sell on your website, along with a product research dropshipping spreadsheet included inside the cheat sheet. Then you're going to select a dropshipping supplier. You have over 25 suppliers here at AutoDS with tens of millions of products that you can resell with dropshipping automation, price monitoring, stock monitoring, automatic orders, and everything else that comes along with the package. Then you're going to sign up to a hosting service. This is because you're going to have to have a hosting service, connect that to your URL that you're going to purchase from GoDaddy. And once you make that connection, you can start working on your website and you did it in a much much cheaper way rather than just going to wordpress.com and giving them more money for the same platform and for the same editing processes. Okay, then you're going to create your WooCommerce store. We went over creating a logo, creating a banner, so your cover image, your logo for your website, and I showed you guys really good free ways to do it. Then you're going to add a store theme, paid or free, completely up to you. I went with a free theme and it looks good enough. Then you're going to set up payment options. We went over that, adding a blog page and blog posts, and we also learned how to add a slash blog inside the URL to keep all of our posts organized inside the blog page. We also went over how to set up your policies and legal pages. These are the pages that you want to have. Get help from those generators that I 
mention those plugins and also get help from chat GPT. You can also copy best practices from your competitors and of course, change it to your own website. Then we're going to add dropshipping automation. So auto DS for all the reasons that I mentioned, then you're going to import your first product using auto DS, of course, and its features to import those products quickly to your store. Then you're going to market your store either with pay-per-click ads with influencer marketing. So here you have a good blog article on influencer marketing platforms with how to find those influencers and negotiate with them content marketing. So creating a blog page for getting organic traffic. We went over it in this video, of course, viral social media posts and email marketing, which of course, chat GPT can help you out with that. And you've also got the audience research spreadsheet to be able to narrow down the right target audience when running ads and trying to find the right audience to target with your ads. Then we went over order fulfillment. So how to fulfill your orders manually or using the fulfill by AutoDS service to get it completely done and automated for you from A to Z and customer service. So there's also the WooCommerce live chat plugin. And this is also another good plugin to use on top of all the plugins that we already mentioned in order to have a live chat on your website. Don't have time to demonstrate it, but let me know in the comments below if you maybe you want another video going maybe only about plugins or any other topic that you feel that I missed out in this video. And of course, be sure to read your emails, see what people are sending you from your contact us page that you learned to create from this video and go over social media comments. Of course, if you have social media accounts on your website and you're creating posts and you're trying to direct traffic to your websites, then we've got the five recommended WooCommerce plugins, but you got more bonus plugins in this video and the top 10 trending products to dropship on WooCommerce. I'm going to leave that for you and the cheat sheet. And finally, what recommended WooCommerce dropshipping suppliers to work with. In my case, my top favorites are Walmart, even though it's a retail supplier, AliExpress, because it's simply a huge marketplace, which is also super dropshipping friendly. CJ Dropshipping, a great wholesale supplier, Overstock, Banggood, and of course there's more. Just head over to autods.com slash suppliers. Again, guys, if you want this cheat sheet, hashtag WooCommerce, let me know what you thought about this video and I will send it to you. And I hope that now you know how to create a WooCommerce dropshipping website from A to Z with all of the features that you need to know about all that was included inside this video. Now I know it was not a short video and there are still many, many more things that we can and need to talk about. So let me know in the comment section below what you think was missed out on this video or what you would like to learn more on, what you would like me to emphasize more on, and I can create new content, new videos to walk you through whatever you're having trouble with or whatever you simply want to know and learn more about. Last but not least, do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn how to take advantage of your business and take it to the next step and easily outshine your competition. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your WooCommerce dropshipping business and I can't wait to hear about your success story.